The session of the afternoon is Thomas Hepperick of the CocoDB team yeah. presenting about reusable verification, emulation, validation flow for ASIC design. Thank you, you very much. You, you can click. Thank you. So uh, my name is Thomas. Uh, this is work that came up at the when I was in university. I spent uh, many years at the university designing ASIC sensors and lots of different things for particle physics experiments. And now I'm in a company, Dectris, which does similar things, but for different people. So typical setup for me, or in, in my uh, life, was we have an ASIC, and then we have FPGA, and then we have a PC, and this all has to work together. And then we put this together into a nice uh, device that then we can sell. Those devices produce hundreds of gigabits of data, so it's a bit more complicated in reality. But that's for another day. So we have a lot of talks here about design and design and design. But actually, design is a small part of what is needed. The, the, the work here, kind of abstract, bit of abstract at the beginning uh, presentation, comes from the need that uh, we were designing chips faster than we could get results from the chips. So it took much longer to actually verify them. At the university, we work with students. So the problem is that uh, to make a successful project, you need an ASIC, you need a tape out, you need verification. But on top of that, you would need firmware to actually control this ASIC, takes the data out. Our sensors typically just produce a ton of data. They, they need some kind of FPGA. Then you need a firmware verification. Then you need validation, which is actually test this chip if it will in, in silica, a post silicon production, if it like, performs well. Then you, uh, you need software, then you need production testing, which is wafer probing. All those things have to come together. This is a, ASIC itself is a small part of, of a bigger thing that if you want to deliver a product, you need all those things work together. And what you finish with, and which I observe not only in academia, but also in, a, um, in companies, you finish is that the situation is, is as it goes. We have an ASIC team, we have a verification team, which they sometimes talk together. Uh, and, and you have this feedback from verification to, to, to ASIC design. But then you have other team doing firmware and another team doing software. And they, tip, they often, <laughs> unfortunately, don't even talk to each other. They talk through specifications or meetings, and one doesn't know what the other is doing. And this creates a, a bit of a problem. This communication also doesn't exist. There is no feedback for people who develop software and validating the chip, or in general doing software and firmware into the ASIC. So you finish with the situation, then you have an ASIC, and maybe if, if it's not even buggy, you have a lot of patches around it, because we did not communicate well with the, with the, with the process. So it's extremely costly to develop this kind of issue very late when the AS silicon is back. And just to give you one more, actually I added this now, just to give you one more um, story about it. When we talk about chip design or ASIC design, we talk about uh, this is the cost of, of modern ASIC design. And when you see the, the breakdown, it's not the ASIC design itself that costs most of the money. It's the verification and software more, so cost a lot most of the money. This is something that gives you thinking where, what to attack. Yeah? It's fun to design, but actually it's not the bottleneck at the moment for large companies, the design itself. So what can you do or what can you try to do? It's not so simple, but the, on, the way we solved it on our small level is to, uh, to, make, to let the software people do the verification. At the end, verification is software. And uh, the way to solve it is that uh, technically somehow Bureaucratically, it's much more complicated than technically, but um, make the people who develop firmware, who validate software, and do the production software work together at the same time while the ASIC is being built. So uh, develop a mechanism that this is possible. So all of them can feed back and make this a success. This not only speeds up the production, but also the team-wise, my experience is works better. Actually, the software people like to influence what's happening in the ASIC. It's interesting. It's, it's a human aspect of that, and I think this works well. Can work well. So, what we have is we start with, uh, an, 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 say, digital <coughs> ASIC. Um, we start with an RTL. 
And what we do, we build some RTL to simulate this, okay, around it. And uh, for the simulation, what we do is actually we try to we try to push as much as possible the, the verification part into the software. In this case, we uh, uh, in this approach, we use CocoTB to talk with a simulation, to talk the, the firmware to, to be able to operate the ASIC, and we do a bit of Python testing to, to run on it. I will explain this on an example. Then what we can do while developing the chip, in case we're developing a firmware, we can um, make the emulation happen. So in this case, we exchange the, uh, instead of simulator, we use the FPGA, we can, uh, <laughs> The digital part of the ASIC we can also put into the FPGA and not changing anything in the software, we can still run uh, tests just much faster. And when the chip is back, uh, we change basically the PCB and uh, use the same FPGA or we can use the same FPGA and um, the ASIC is a physical silicon. In this way, the, the software part doesn't change it, uh, so much. We add things, but the basic functionality of the software is the same for people who do wafer probing, is the same for the people who do validation, and it's the same for people who do verification, as far as you can do it. And I would like to show a small example that worked for us in the past. Um, this is a very simple demo. This can be much more complicated. This is built uh, at the university, where we have to work with students. So the students Students of physics, not physics of engineering, so things are super simple. Um, and so let's take an example of a, a TDC chip. TDC chip is time to digital converter. Say it's a simple uh, chip that um, the signal comes and you have to digitize at the moment the pulse starts and the size of the pulse. Yeah? It's very simple. Uh, you, you take the, uh, you have some configuration through the SPI, you have some, some, some module that decodes the pulse, FIFO, the encoder, and serially stream the data out. And, and what you do is, on top of that, you build a firmware, and what the firmware needs, needs some bus, SPI, you need to generate pulses, TDCs, FIFOs, and in case of simulation, you plug the CocoTB here on the bus. In case of emulation, you, uh, in this example, you use UART. In reality, we can use some other things. And, and next to it is an ASIC. Uh, this is built based on some Basel framework that we built uh, at some point, and I use this for the UART. How does it work? On a, on a module side, you have a very simple module definition some SPI module that sits on a super dumb bus. It's very simple in, in, in a way that the students can understand it easily, and, but it does the job. And on the software side, we have a, a driver for every module like that, which would be called something like hardware abstraction layer, when the modules inside the FPGA have a driver and people communicate in a human not only by numbers or port, uh, not only by numbers and memory map ports, but it's actually with some driving. Then we have a top-level configuration file in our case. We define the interfaces, the module, their addresses, and this is like a, a memory mapping where what is sitting. Then we have some basic abstraction layer that we define our registers that we can then use. Those that, that are the registers uh, in the chip that we can access. And, and how the user experience looks like, you initialize all these things, and then you basically, after initialization, you can verify your chip uh, in simulation or emulation or when it's physically back, more or less with the same code. There are also always some limitations, but and it looks exactly the same. And uh, you can, um, until that point, you can give it to any software developer or student who knows a bit of Python, and he can verify your chips. Yeah, the code does not, the code, this code does not change. How the simulation works, you, you basically, um, we use CocoTB. We use CocoTB here, and uh, we, instead of uh, UART in this case, we sweep the interface to TCP IP, we communicate and with the simulator. In emulation, we just uh, switch this interface to UART and, uh, and simulate. Obviously, this can be. 
So uh, this is a small example. The, there, is a, there was a link above. Uh, what's important in my opinion, so all of that were, uh, is integrated in the, in the continuous integration. And uh, in this, this is an example uh, where we execute all the tests in the simulation here. Uh, this is using GitHub. Then we build a firmware thanks to four F4 PGA, so this is all open source, we can build it and we can run an emulation. Emulation has to run on the real hardware, so this is my laptop running a, a self-hosted Git, uh, GitHub runner and basically everything run, runs through uh, in the cloud and generates the reports on every modification. And then you can open the reports, you have, we use PyTest to generate the test reports and this goes automatically in simulation. You can run in parallel. You can parallelize this. Uh, we can add coverage and randomization to it thanks to um, PyVAC. There are also other options at the moment. Um, you, you can add coverage. You can add randomization. You can have a nice report on the functional coverage. The testing, you, you can, uh, we uh, you make use of a Pi test, which you make use software, which is verification to have a nice uh, parameterized test. If you need one, uh, we can execute the test in parallel. Since we use open source simulators, it, there is no limit to this place. You can run thousands of tests if you really would like to. I think Corandum, which was mentioned here, uses also that, and we spread the testing over multiple instances of of, of in the cloud. And my conclusions are that moving teams together for better collaboration, um, I think this works very well if you can execute that. Verification is software, so let the software and firmware people contribute to, to ASIC verification. It's really hard to find verification people. This way you can maybe easier have them. They are also having fun if something new. Um, Reuse the validation, reuse the verification uh, and production testing, all this code that is being developed three times sometimes without connection to each other. Uh, try to make it into one and it can work. Uh, important is to understand the limitations. There will be limitations to this kind of methods. So be careful, it I guess will not work for everybody. Um, this can be also an organizational challenge. In some organizations, some people don't like change. They like to have their own kingdoms, and uh, it's sometimes a problem to let them work together. And um, this approach uses all the open source tools. There is nothing proprietary, including building bit file, running this emulation um, in, the, in, in, the, in the cloud infrastructure. Yeah, and there are a few large size ASICs that were developed this way, and they were first time right, actually. They are not very complicated, but they are quite big. This is two by two centimeter chips, full reticle size chips. Uh, some of them are used in some experiments. Thank you. Two. All right, questions? Olaf has a question. You have a mic in front of you, Olaf, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> FYI. Yeah, so I, uh, this is all very interesting. Uh, are there any uh, tests you can't run with CocoTB, or can you handle, like, uh, can, it, can it do it at all? Sorry, can you repeat? Yeah, so you're using CocoTB. Uh, yeah, as a, as, a, as a way to access simulator. Yeah, yeah. But so, so are there any like restriction things you can't run with that, or can you run all the tests, that, all the tests you want to do? You can do that with CocoDB. Yeah, I think so. Yes. Like CocoDB is not making a lot of work here. The work is moved actually to software. So the idea is that the the the, the verification is really not different than having a chip on the table. It it is the the idea is to make the verification look like you're having a chip on the table and actually measuring it. And for the user perspective, it is not different than that, or for the majority of these people. Obviously, somebody who has to set this up has to know. But when a, when a master student comes, or somebody not experienced, or software guy comes, it's like, you have to do it. And for him, it's like software and con controlling a chip. Can I ask, is, is 
Coco TV the missing is Coco TV a key no. part of this? Okay. No, it's just uh, it makes things faster to develop, but yeah. there is no fundamental reason. You you need to interface somehow. You can probably use yeah. just VPI directly. Yeah. It will be a bit faster. Yeah, if you hate yourself, you could do that. Yeah. 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 Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and and that, 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 it's it's about concept. That's just an example. You, you yeah. can do it much better. You can use proper buses, axi, and so on. Yeah. But uh, if there is no need, there is no need. Just keep it simple. Yeah, I love it. It's we do a very similar thing. It's a it's a good methodology. I'm a preaching to the converted here. Any last questions? Ooh, one. Okay. Yeah, thank you for the nice talk. Um, I have a question on uh, on the human side. So, ideally. Um, the verification team and the design team talk to each other only via specifications uh, to keep the test independent of the design. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I don't know how it is with the really large teams. For if you have three designers and two verification guys, this is out of the, uh, this is just not realistic for uh, for a smaller uh, development. I think like um, you have some people here who knows how it is with 600 people. Maybe that's a different um, different situation. All right, let's thank Thomas. Cheers. <laughs>